Today we're going to be covering how to set up your Flask application for success when thinking about taking it to production. So if you've ever worked with Flask, you'll probably have seen this error message, which says, this is a development server, do not use it for a production deployment. So today we're going to be covering what are the required pieces for you to bundle up your Flask application and be able to use it for a production workflow. So the application that we're going to be working with uh, is pretty straightforward. Uh, so we're using the factory pattern that basically we define a function in this case called create create app where we're instantiating a flask app application and then we're just registering some of our routes in this case our routes uh, are being handled through a blueprint and that all it's doing it's registering two routes one of them is called get users uh, where we have a mock user table, and then it's just returning the keys of this dictionary, which is just the name, so Rob and Mandy. And then I have another route for getting a specific user where we provide a parameter in the URL that represents the user ID. Uh, and then if that user is found, you'll see specific data about that user. That's kind of the setup that we're working with. You can run this application locally. Um, in this case, you might have noticed that I used the, com the command flask a. This just is the option to represent what is a local file where you can find your application. So in this case, I'm pointing to this file called local. And because the application is called app or this variable is called app, Flask knows how to find it. So in this case, this file, all it's doing is importing that function that I already covered and it's instantiating uh, an application like so. So to this method, we can run Flask locally, um, but now we want to think about production. So first of all, the most important thing is getting a production WSGI server instead. The Unicorn is a production grade server that allows us to deploy Flask and other similar libraries for production workflows. So the, the way we would install G Unicorn is similar to any other library in Python. So we just do G Unicorn in our requirements file, or we can do pip install G Unicorn. And then uh, we can run a script. In this case, I just created a handy bash script that um, reads the configuration file, and then it's looking under the app directory, and then it's looking for the create app function. So in this case, uh, this function, this script is situated right here. So it's gonna look up on the app directory, and then it's gonna look in the init file, and then it's gonna look for the create app function. So that's kind of the setup. And then there's multiple ways of, of how to configure your GUnicorn server. You can read the documentation, but I think uh, some of that noteworthy um, configurations are, for example, the bind. Uh, this is basically the IP address and the port to which you're bounding your application. In this case, I'm bounding my application on port 8000. Uh, it's usually very common for applications to run on port 80. Uh, but in this case, we're going to be running everything under a Docker container, so it doesn't matter too much. And then IP address. Uh, in this case, usually uh, you might see a lot of applications where they just bind to all interfaces. This means that it'll accept traffic from all of the network interfaces within um, your server. But in this case, we just want to bound it to one. So uh, we want to bound it to our F0 interface. Uh, you can kind of copy this uh, function or you can statically just type in IP address of your server. Or in this case, uh, because we're running everything under a Docker container, um, you can use this function, which will just get the network interface, the IP address, and just bind itself to that IP address. Another noteworthy configuration is the amount of workers. So the way that G-Unicorn works is that um, whenever a request comes in, um, a request gets handled to one of multiple workers. Each worker represents an independent copy of your Flask application. So uh, let's say if I have two workers, um, G-Unicorn is gonna start two threads. Um, that are identical and independent to each other. So, and it's gonna be load balancing requests between them. Um, so a, a good practice is to kind of strategize uh, your amount of workers by the amount of CPUs that you have. So in this case, we're just starting two workers for every CPU and then we're adding one extra. This is a very common configuration, but of course, based on your server setup, uh, you might require to change this up. Um, something worth considering here um, given the way that all of the applications are independent, if you're, um, let's say if you're starting a hundred applications and then all of them are connecting to a database, just make sure that, uh, your database can support that kind of workload because your, your database will have to support having potentially a hundred concurrent, uh, connections. Um, so with that being said, 
uh, I think those are the two main configuration points. Um, you can also specify what kind of log level you want, or perhaps there's some kind of timeout uh, for your request. But I think uh, I'll leave that as a homework to the viewer. If they're really interested in all the configuration options that they might have, they might they can visit uh, G Unicorns documentation. So with this script and this configuration, that's enough to run a G Unicorn server. Um, now to bundle all of this, uh, we will be using Docker. So our Docker file is just a way of specifying um, the definition of how we're gonna assemble all of our dependencies uh, in terms of um, not only our application, but also like uh, our environment. So in this case, I'm just starting from a Python 3.8 Slim as our base image. Then I'm copying my requirements file and selling them. Um, I'm changing the permissions on my file on my gunicorn script so I can execute it and then I'm executing the script and that's enough to execute our server. From this point on, we can execute our application. So I'm just gonna showcase what it looks like to run it locally. Um, so in this case, I'm not running within the Docker container. So this is just running the local uh, version of the application. Um, so I'm executing a request to get all my users. If I hit this, I get what I expect, Rob and Mandy, or I can also fetch a specific user and then I get specific data about Rob or about Andy, or I can put a other user that is not found and I get the specific response that I expect. And then to run this uh, on a Docker environment, uh, we would need to build our image and then run it. So in this case, I can just run it, point to our, our context where our Docker file is gonna be located. I'm giving it the name of Rob server uh, and I'm tagging it with the latest tag then I can build the image and then I can run it. In this case, I'm not located in the right directory. And then finally, I can just run my application. In this case, uh, I'm mapping the internal port of 8000. That's where we specified our G unicorn to run uh, to the external port or 5001. Then I can run our server, as you can see, we're spawning a bunch of workers. Uh, so this is G Unicorn running. We're running on this IP address. This is the internal IP address of our image um, running. And then we're exposed on the internal port of 8000. And we can see a lot of workers that are being spawned. And that is based on the formula showcasing the configuration file. And from this point on, we can execute the same uh, endpoints, the same uh, API calls just to this port, uh, 5001. Now we see the same responses, so I can look for Rob, click for Mandy, forget all of our users. Uh, and that's how you run um, the application on Docker. So once you have this, you have your image built, you can um, go publish it to uh, perhaps any kind of like Docker repository such as Docker Hub or ECR on AWS, or you could publish it directly in some of these services that allow you to run Docker images uh, such as Fargate uh, on AWS or Brazil. Uh, and that's how you take a Flask application to production.